This is Jonathan Wiseman with another episode of Level Up with Living Houston. I have broker owner Laura Weissman in the house today. And today we're going to be discussing how to downsize your home without downgrading. And from what I hear, this is one of the things you specialize in. Yes, it is a very popular subject amongst my clients. Tell me a little bit more about it. So I own a boutique firm in the Houston area and one of the most important things that I focus on when I'm training my agents and for myself as a competing broker is it's very important to dial in on what you specialize in as a realtor. And I specialize in two things, one being people that are going through a divorce and the other is people that want to downsize their home, but they do not want to downgrade. Sure. And it is a very, very popular subject and it it's also one where people don't just need a, a regular agent to throw their house on the market they really truly need to sit down with a consultant to see their options mm -hmm. so what are some of the top reasons why people want to downsize there are several reasons why people downsize but across the board i see the top three that are the most common um, number one being that people are tired of paying property taxes and utility bills on square footage that they're not even using and maintaining the home, interior, exterior, the large ticket items like the roof, the AC, the water heaters, um, a pool and the yard, all of that just, it becomes daunting when you don't have a big family that's using the space anymore. Um, the second top reason that I see why people downsize is they're looking for a more stress-free lifestyle. They want to, instead of maintaining a large home, they want to spend that time with family members, traveling, doing hobbies, leisure time. You know, they are usually at a point in their lives where they're done with spending all day, every day maintaining a home and they're looking for more enjoyment in life. And I've heard you also mention the emotional factor of downsizing. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, the emotional side of down sizing is actually dual sided. Um, there's the positive side of it. It's where people are looking to downsize. So they have more time to spend with their grandchildren or travel to visit family or just pursue interests and hobbies that they've always wanted to do. You know, typically when somebody's downsizing, they're at a point in their life where they're not working so much anymore. And now they have the time to pursue other interests and if all of your free time and money is spent maintaining a home or repairs, obviously that's not optimal. Sure. Um, so for emotional reasons, they're looking to be free of their home and they're looking to pursue other interests or spend time with family or travel. The other side of the emotional factor of downsizing is sometimes I see people who they really do want to cut the home loose but people are worried about their social status and they feel that when they sell their million dollar luxury home, they no longer will have that social standing within the community. Sure, I understand that. Another emotion that I see come into play a lot with people that are downsizing is sentimental attachment to the home. Um, sometimes it's to the home itself, sometimes it's to the memories that they acquired while living in the home with their family. And a lot of times people will just sit on a home that's accumulating deferred maintenance and they're not even utilizing 90% of the home, but they don't want to sell it because they've got too many memories there. Yeah, that makes sense. Got it. So what are some of the ways that you can downsize your home without actually downgrading? So I've heard you talk about how a lot of people, you know, they enjoy their home, they like the lifestyle that they're living, and then they feel like downsizing also equates to downgrading. Correct. So what are some options to be able to actually downsize without downgrading? There are several options available to homeowners so they can downsize without downgrading. One of those is the option to move into a mid-rise or a high-rise or a condominium. The main reason for these types of properties is they, they grant the homeowner a lock and leave type lifestyle. And what that means is they don't have to worry about the maintenance of the property, the exterior, even the interior. 
Um, they don't have to maintain the grounds, pay for maintenance for a yard, sprinkler systems, driveways, foundation, all of the things that become deferred maintenance for a homeowner, those are encompassed in your monthly maintenance fee when you live in a complex of that type. Sure. Another option is a patio home. Um, there are many master plan communities in Houston that offer a section of the community that is geared specifically for a patio home, a luxury patio home. And patio homes put the majority of the square footage in the main living space. So patio homes typically have two or three bedrooms at the very most. They put the majority of the living space in the kitchen, the living room, and the primary suite. Mm -hmm. And very minimal yard. And and at that, even then, in those communities, those patio homes usually have a small fee and the HOA takes care of the yard for them. So it really equates to a more laid back lifestyle and, and less stressful than maintaining a large home that comes with all of the maintenance. So with the patio home, the mid rises, the high rises, it takes away that factor of the maintenance and people having to take care of their own homes, their yards and the upkeep. Correct. It eliminates that from the equation. Correct. Another added benefit of living in a, in a smaller unit, like a, a high rise or a condo or a patio home is if you do want to make changes to the home, it's not as costly and it's not as stressful. And another thing that people need to keep in mind when they're thinking of upgrading a home that they're currently in or updating the home they're currently in is the time that you are displaced from your home. When you're remodeling a kitchen, even if you just want to put in new counters or paint the cabinets or change out the backsplash, it kicks you out of your kitchen. And not to mention, I have a lot of clients um, that are really, you know, in their golden years and the dust and the chemicals and the fumes that are accumulated in the house whenever they're doing renovations, it becomes a health hazard for them. So not only can it jeopardize their health, but then they incur the extra expense and stress of either temporary housing, going to a hotel for a month, moving in with their kids, whatever it is they're doing. And for some homeowners, moving and handling renovations, juggling those along with your family and your lifestyle and travel and your work and your career, to juggle all of that, it's doable when you're vibrant and feeling healthy. But when you get into your older years, moving can really take a toll on somebody emotionally and physically, and it just wears them out. Why do you think some people are scared to downsize? The most common reason that I see people fear downsizing is losing that big luxury home means that they might be taking a step down when it comes to social status. And one of the things that I encourage them to focus on is don't just look at what you're losing, look at what you're gaining. When you keep yourself attached to a big home, um, the maintenance and the bills, they just start to accumulate. And it's really not about if you can afford it or not. It's about your quality of life. If every time you turn around, you're having to fix a water heater or the AC is going out, one of your three AC units needs repair, you know, that's time that's being taken away from you being able to travel or spend time with your grandkids or even just simply, you know, watch one of your favorite shows. It's, it, impacts your lifestyle in a negative way. So there are options for people to sell their oversized luxury home and move into a smaller luxury home. So from your experience, what would you say are the top two or three myths about downsizing that are inaccurate? One of the common myths that I hear people focus on when it comes to downsizing is they think that they're not gonna have enough room to entertain anymore. Um, it really starts to play into the emotional factor of downsizing and that's that I've experienced it with my own parents. Um, you know, Christmas day was always held at my mom's house and we'd all go over there on Christmas day and open gifts. And when you're in a home with a smaller footprint, you can't comfortably accommodate everyone. Sure. So the fear of losing out on those memory making moments sometimes will scare people into you know not 
not downsizing. Another myth of downsizing your home is people have this preconception that if they sell their million dollar home in one of the most prestigious neighborhoods and they downsize to a three or four or five hundred thousand dollar home, they think that they're dropping on the social status ladder. Yeah. And that's very much not the case. Um, they aren't necessarily downgrading, they're transitioning to a home that's better for this time of their life. What are some examples of that? Well, moving into a luxury patio home or a town home, for instance, um, you'll notice very quickly if you go into one of the luxury townhome communities that there aren't that many kids around because the majority of people that have moved into those homes are people that are looking for that more stress-free lifestyle. And they're being financially savvy when they do this. So when someone is worried about losing their million dollar home and how it's gonna make them look, one of the things I encourage them to take a different perspective on is a lot of people say, why would someone that's financially intelligent be living in a million dollar home and paying 30, 40 grand a year in taxes. That's money that could be going into a retirement fund. Um, they can be supplementing their financial portfolio. And there's a multitude of financial benefits when someone sells their home and gets rid of all those added expenses. Give me an example of some of your clients. I know you had many clients that have been in prestigious neighborhoods, very expensive homes that have sold them and downsized. Mm -hmm. Give me one or two examples of how you've seen that benefit. And after they went through that process, what was the reaction about it? Their reaction is that they are so happy to have a better quality of life. At the end of the day, you know, obviously there's a lot of logistics that go into making a move in real estate. And one of the things you'll hear me commonly say is real estate is a numbers game. If the numbers work, you can make it happen. But I don't care how many deals I've done, at the end of the day, the people end up making a move based on emotion. So yes, we take all of the financials into consideration and we look at the numbers and we wanna make sure they work, but your home is an amenity that you're getting to enjoy. Unless you're an investor, um, if you're buying a residential home, whether you're in your golden years, whether you're a first time home buyer, whether you're middle-aged and you've got young children, there's no matter what it is, at the end of the day, you're buying based on emotion. And the people that buy purely based on financials and logistics and the stats, um, they're the ones that don't end up having that, oh my gosh, I love my home feeling. So I feel that whenever somebody makes a decision in real estate, it's 50% based on logistics and it's 50% based on emotion. And I think that's a very healthy balance. That makes sense. I mean, it sounds right. So if I'm a 65 year old person living in a million dollar house, what are some of the things that I should consider to help me make a decision if it's time to downsize or not? One of the top questions is, do you never go upstairs? Do you have rooms in the house that you never even use? That's a common one that I hear across the board. Um, some people want to sell their house and supercharge their retirement fund, put money in savings, uh, give them money to live off of, or maybe start a business or some type of venture, pursue a hobby. Um, some people are looking, you know, it, have you reached a point in your life where you're tired of dealing with the weight of a oversized home and you're ready to travel and spend time with your loved ones? Also, sometimes, you know, people that are living in a luxury home, they're, if you're zoned to a really good school district, your property taxes are going to be pretty high and your HOA fees. They'll add up quick. Yeah. And any one of those is a good reason to downsize. And if you're checking two or three or five of those on your list, yeah. it's probably that time. Yeah. But then again, uh, the biggest reason I see people downsize is it comes down to an emotional reason. And it's that they want a better quality of life. They want more time with their kids or their grandchildren, more time with their significant other. 
Um, they've reached a point in their life where they're not working so much and they don't need to pay for a big house because it's not being used. And they want to free themselves of that home so they can go pursue other interests and hobbies. When somebody's in a situation where they're, and we talked about it earlier today, where somebody's trying to decide if it's time to go ahead and downsize mm -hmm. or if they should just remodel their million dollar house, you know, what type of advice would you give them or, you know, different things you would tell them to consider to make that decision? Well, there's a lot of things to consider when someone's deciding if they should stay in their current home and remodel it or if they should move. Um, with the way the market is right now, it's a record-breaking seller's market, so people could really take advantage of selling their home. However, they're worried that once they sell their home, they're not gonna have another house to move into because everything's multiple offer right now. So a lot of people are opting to just renovate their current home so that they don't have to move and they wanna get it where they, they want it to be so they, they can stay there for a few more years. Sure. However, before they decide to do that, they really need to look at their long-term plans and goals. Um, obviously, no one has a crystal ball. They can't determine the future, but they need to realize that if they're going to remodel or renovate the home 100% so it feels right and it's not just a couple rooms were redone and the others were left outdated, if they really want to do it right, it's going to cost upwards of you know fifty to a hundred thousand dollars. It can get into the six figures real quick. So, if they're okay with putting that money into the home and knowing that they're not going to get that money back, then if they're good with that and they love their location, the location of their home, they love the floor plan and it's working for them, and they just need to update it. As long as they can come to terms with the fact that they can't turn around and sell it and just recoup the funds they spent on decorating, then staying in the home and remodeling it is an option for them. So you really need to accept the fact that when you remodel something, it's something for your own enjoyment and it's an amenity you get to enjoy, kind of like putting in a pool sure. and you enjoying it is what matters. And then when it comes time to sell the home, now your your house is gonna sell faster than your neighbors, definitely. And it'll probably sell on the higher end of the price spectrum, but you're never going to really recoup the money that you put into there. Yeah. Um, in addition, the, uh, the, uh, the emotional toll that it takes on the household when you're renovating, it displaces the family, sometimes the fumes, the dust, um, everything that's going on with the renovations, the paint, sheetrock repair, you name it. Some type of issue. <laughs> some type of domino effect happening. Yeah, what are some of those pain points you've seen related to remodeling? So some of the pain points I see people deal with when they're remodeling is they forget to consider the ripple effect it's going to have on their life. Sure. So if you think you're gonna repaint your kitchen cabinets, that sounds great, and you're envisioning your new white kitchen, but you don't remember that while that's happening, you can't cook, you can't make your kids lunches, um, your refrigerator is probably taped off, you can't even get in there, can't make coffee. So you're setting up shop in a different part of your house or you're in a temporary living situation, maybe in a hotel, living with friends or family. And for me personally, and a lot of my clients are entrepreneurs, um, it, 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 it bleeds into their work life sure. and it's affecting them. They're late to meetings. They're flustered when they get to work. And because it's so common to experience a domino effect when you're doing renovations, um, renovations always take longer than you think. Yeah. And they cost twice as much. Mm -hmm. You always want to add on a 30% to whatever quote you get, um, every single time, because typically that's what you're going to end up spending. If it goes right. Correct. <laughs> right. And, you know, at the end of all of it, it doesn't necessarily um, take away the pain points of downsizing that we had mentioned no. earlier. No. I have a friend right now. Um, they're trying to decide if they should move or just remodel their house. And the conversation I have is, well, you can remodel it and make it look the way you want, but it's not solving the problem of adding another bathroom. You know, so you have to look at the functional space of the home and see if you're really remedying the situation. That's the problem. And sometimes people need a consultant to take them through that and think out loud, brainstorm together and look at the different options 
when I meet with clients, I sit down, I usually end up writing out three complete scenar scenarios from start to finish with numbers attached, with number figures. And I tell them, okay, well, let's say you stay here and you remodel the kitchen and you do X, Y, Z. That's what this is going to look like. Let's say you do minimal renovations. Maybe you paint the house a neutral color. We put it on the market. We price it at a at the sweet spot, we get it sold quick for you. And now you can move on down the road into something that's more stress-free and it accommodates your lifestyle more at this point in your life. Sure. Um, and then there's obviously other situations depending on the uniqueness of the client. Who should somebody contact if they are looking to downsize? If somebody is considering downsizing, they really need to contact a true real estate consultant and not just a licensed agent. So. There's a few different things that they need to consider when selecting an agent. If they live in a luxury home, they need to consult with a realtor that understands their lifestyle, um, understands what parts of their lifestyle they want to maintain and where they can move that will allow them to do that. They also need a realtor who can market and sell a luxury property. Um, Selling a luxury home is a completely different beast than selling a more moderately priced home. And you need an agent that has an understanding of that market and has the wherewithal to get the right level of photography and video, um, has the right connections and marketing connections to make sure that the home is marketed correctly. And you said that they should contact a consultant versus a typical agent. What would you say the difference is between a consultant and an agent? There's a huge difference between a real estate agent and a real estate consultant. Um, I consider myself a consultant because I'm going to sit down with someone and I'm not just going to run some numbers and put a CMA in front of them. I'm truly going to talk about their goals, their family goals, their goals for themselves, their financial goals. And I'm going to handcraft exactly what we need to do to make sure they can reach their goals. And in order to do that, I formalize the relationship. I sign a confidentiality agreement with my clients. Um, I'm usually exposed to some of their uh, very sensitive information and they need to feel confident that it won't be compromised. And so for me to really truly advise them and do my job well, I have to look at all aspects and areas of their life and their lifestyle. And then I offer my advice. And then at the end of the day, it becomes their decision. Okay. So uh, as we're wrapping this up, is, is there anything else that, you know, just a last thought that you'd like to contribute to somebody who's looking to downsize and not downgrade? My biggest piece of advice to somebody that's considering downsizing that doesn't want to downgrade is I encourage them to focus on what they'll be gaining and not what they're losing. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming in today. Uh, again, this is Laura Weissman, owner, broker of Living Houston. You can find her at livinghouston.com. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me.